Maybe one of the things that's lacking in our society, perhaps in your own life, in the lives of those that you know, is sacred space. Space just to simply be. How often do you find yourself creating space for that? And if you are someone that already does that, then you absolutely know without doubt how important that is to you on your journey, how nourishing it is, how it plugs you in to this infinite source of energy which replenishes you, which helps build resilience, which supports you like nothing else. And it can give you the space to simply connect with deeper parts of yourself. Deeper parts of yourself that perhaps you wouldn't connect with if you were so busy, 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 busy. And the mind just wants to keep us busy. Society is set up to keep us busy. And a lot of the busy is unnecessary. The mind tells us what we need to do next is constantly feeding us with all these ideas and suggestions and making us plan into the next moment, into the next hour, into the next day, week, month, year ahead, year ahead. And so if we let the mind control our existence, then we will find that there is no space to simply be. The mind doesn't offer that. The mind simply runs on programs that are already installed. And the space of being which is required is a very, very different place. Mostly, if people tap into that, even just briefly, then they experience a shift a change in perspective, a kind of ah moment that says, ooh, that's real, that's true, that makes sense to me on an intuitive, physiological level, like the nervous system just calms right down, like there's a sense that there is peace, a peace that is so deeply experienced, even if just fleeting, that we can indeed know in our hearts that it's obtainable. If we never ever give ourselves the space to experience the sacredness of our being, then we don't really know the power of it. We don't really know the importance of it. And so we have to experience it on every level. But I think more importantly than ever before now is the experience of it on a physiological level. Because people's minds are kind of wired so high to be um, so overwhelmed, so triggered, that the body is in a state of fight or flight for many people as a, as a constant, kind of as a norm, always in a high state of anxiety. Now that might not be you personally, but it may help you to understand the space that some of the other people in your life, maybe friends, family, work colleagues, where they're at. And if that's you, if you've been experiencing that, and for some people this can be a lifetime of experience, a lifetime of stress, anxiety, overwhelm, just feeling like you're not quite in tune, in sync, in the flow, connected to something that's supporting you, nourishing you, feeding you, holding you. 
when there's no grace, when there's no ease, when it feels as if you're just being battered constantly, then you're in a, a high state of anxiety. And through that high state of anxiety, of course your immune system is suppressed, many of the functions of the body which would otherwise be restorative, regenerative, are compromised. And so the knock-on effect of accumulative stress is devastating. And so the importance of creating the space where that can change is essential. It's essential to acknowledge the importance of that. That's the first step, I guess, is acknowledging how important that is. Because if we, if we just take it for granted that that's just how it is to be human, <laughs> But that's our lot, you know. Some people are just strung that way, some people are just wired that way. And that's how we are, you know. If we accept that as the norm, as normal, uh, then we can miss out. Miss out on so much. Miss out on a true connection to ourselves. To discover our, our, our real potential, a potential in relationship to others as well as ourselves, potential in the relationship we have with our environment. And so all this potential is compromised by these limiting states of anxiety and overwhelm. Now it's not anyone's fault that they're feeling that, okay? So if that happens to you, uh, people you know, we need to create a space of compassion around it first. Things change so much more easily when we hold a space of grace, a space of compassion, or even a neutral space of just allowing things to be different. Rather than judging, rather than trying to fix, rather than blaming, rather than denying or avoiding. We can accept that there is something going on here that is detrimental and that a space needs to be created in order to offer the opportunity for that to change. So the question is, how do you create space for yourself? How can you do that when you're so, so busy? And how much of that busyness is important? Really important. You know, if you've got people in your care, then the energies will come in to support you to prioritize your own self-care and the care of others in your care. That's a given. But what else is it that you expend a lot of your energy on, a lot of your worry on, a lot of your thoughts on? What kinds of projections and distortions do you experience on a day-to-day -day level that take your energy away from you and your own self-nurture, your own self-awareness? your own sacred self and instead you prioritize all those other things. And the mind can be so busy giving us all of these things to think about all of the time. And it's our choice whether we engage with all of those things. And that's where your power is. Your power is in the choices that you make. So how in your power are you? Are you making choices that support you, the true you of you? Or are you making choices and giving power away to the non-you? And there's a difference. There's the true essence 
of your authentic self. And then there's this persona, if you like, this facade of creation of who you think you are. And people expend a, a, a huge amount of energy on keeping that persona alive and well. And that created self is full of distorted perceptions of who it thinks it is and what's important and how it needs to engage, how it needs to talk to itself, interact with itself, how it engages with others, the wider world, all of the dialogues that it has either internally or externally are fabricated on a level. If you kind of pull it all apart and you dig away at it, there's not really very much substance there, okay? Because it's a creation, a fabrication of who we think we are based on all the programs that are running in the subconscious mind, the database. It's not who you are. It might be who you think you are and that's going to change. It cannot change through this awakening process can't not change. Change is here and we have to embrace it. We have to embrace it. And the more we embrace it and the more we create space for it, the more comforted and nourished we can be by the energies that are here to help guide this overall process. And so part of it's about surrendering into the space of simply being. In fact, that's the simplest way to make the biggest change in your life. But it can also be the most challenging because the programs that are running are very invested in keeping your creation of reality, your creation of self alive. There's a, so much conditioning there. So many agendas, okay. And we have to come back to this thing about, you know, this isn't, this isn't a blame game. This is nothing to do with, this is your fault and it needs fixing, okay. This is a new awareness, so an awakening consciousness uh, that we're evolving through as human beings to wake up to the understanding that we have been molded and shaped to behave in a certain way which is not our authentic, natural state of being. And in being in that unnatural state, anxiety is high, Health is compromised and we are conditioned to believe that we have to be that way in order to survive, in order to be safe, in order to be loved, in order to be accepted, in order to belong. And so these layers and layers of complex conditioning create a story of who we are that's not actually true at all. And so the awakening process, the energy of ascension, this time of transformation on this planet is about the letting go bit by bit of all of that conditioning so that you can find the very truth of who you are. Forget about the truth out there. 
Forget about who's right, who's wrong, who's saying this, who's saying that. It's all a distraction. It's all there to keep the same conditioning running. The way to take back your power, true power, is to know that you have been conditioned to believe, to behave, to accept, to create, to show up as a limited part of what you truly are. It's like that much of who you are in a multi-dimensional, huge potential of possibility. And so bit by bit, as the awakening energies come in, as the vibration of our body, of our energy body, starts to shift and shake up all of the denser old information that's stored in us, we start to reveal a new narrative from an authentic place, connected to a clearer vision of what human beings are. how they communicate, how they naturally interact, how they're part of all of these intricate networks and how they can flow with all of that energy to support their life here on this planet in a healthy and sustainable way. So there's a great deal of change taking place. And you're an important part of that change. And so creating more space for you to just simply be will create an opportunity for grace to flow into your life and to start to erode that which you're not. Letting go of it, releasing it, letting go, releasing it. And as that starts to fall away, you'll start to see more and more clearly, get glimpses to start with, and then it will start to reveal itself in more and more ways, who you are, who you came here to be. Take time to simply be.